Hello and welcome to this webinar about creating and using textures in Corel Photo Paint X7. Thank you for watching this webinar. My name is Mo Boimers. I'm a designer, illustrator and artist uh, based in Germany with my studio Ethan Zeptem. And uh, I've been working with Corel Graphics Suite uh, now since yeah almost two decades. And what I was fascinated about was um, yeah, the power of textures, which can be used uh, in Corel Photo Paint, but in Corel Draw as well. And um, yeah, since the new version is out, X7, there are a few changes in the fill settings where uh, I will talk about in this webinar as well. Uh, of course, there was a webinar about textures in Corel Photo Paint uh, before this one, so this is more. A sequel. Uh, I got a couple of requests from viewers and uh, people um, who, yeah, asked me to uh, elaborate on how to create textures and how they are used uh, a bit more. So I will cover that in this webinar. And um, yeah, the first example I have chosen is. Uh, how I use textures to enhance photos. Well, in this example, it's not really a photo, it's more uh, a 3D render. So I built a model for a client of a cafe in a 3D program and rendered it in another application. And the output is an image like that. And uh, though it already looks, yeah, uh, realistic, it's not quite photorealistic. So if you take a closer look at it, you might see that, yeah, it looks still pretty flat and, and lifeless. So to enhance it a bit more, I applied a couple of effects and textures, of course, that's called pro, uh, post processing. And I'm gonna show you that process, how I did that in Corel Photo Paint. So this is most likely what I start off with, what I start with. Um, this is the image that comes out of uh, my render application. I already did a couple of adjustments in the colors and the contrast and so on. And um, yeah, if you are familiar with working with 3D applications and uh, the rendering process, you might know that you can not only render a finished uh, image on several ways, you can also um, render only aspects of your image, like, uh, for example, the lighting uh, which comes through the windows and uh, which is produced by those uh, yeah, spotlights and the shadows, and you can all all that you can render in a separate pass, which is then called shadow pass and light pass. You can also render only the colors in the entire scene, or um, yeah, many things more. And I use those passes, of course, to to enhance my image a bit more, which you can see here. I added a an additional uh, object for the those wooden uh, textures to uh, yeah make it more realistic the wood texture on the chairs and the bar and I also enhance the lighting and uh, yeah a couple of things more the colors as you can see here and um, yeah this is probably how it looks like when it's um, done straight out of the render. And um, yeah, the post-processing is where the magic really happens. Well, it's not that spectacular actually, to be honest, but um, this makes the difference between a realistic and a photorealistic image, in my opinion. And um, I added a couple of things here, for example, which are actually common to uh, uh, photographs. And this is, for example, yeah, since light has a higher range than uh, can than uh, captured by cameras, uh, you can achieve a sort of over blooming effect 
by simply taking the light pass which uh, shows the uh, the windows uh, simply white because yeah the light breaks through the windows of course and uh, by taking that and adding a Gaussian blur effect to it so you might see the difference if I turn it off and down again so uh, yeah it really shines over those little frame elements and, and makes it more realistic and I also added a vignette effect and this is actually funny it's one of the most used post-processing effects and it become very cliche like uh, using a vignette effect but still um, every camera um, has a spot of focus which is most of the time in the center physically and um, uh, yeah, how should I explain it? Um, the light hits less into the corners of the photo uh, sensor. So uh, this is where uh, how you can achieve that effect with a vignette. And uh, it looks a bit like that. So the light uh, hits less, hits the corners of the uh, CCD sensor less than in the center. Uh, in the center and uh, yeah this is called vignette um, I also added a little bit of distance blur which is called yeah, distance of focus bookie because uh, with a new bookie blur effect you can achieve a more realistic blurring like uh, cameras actually have so um, yeah you might this you might know this from movie scenes where something in the distance is blurred out and where you have those little circles where uh, lights are shining and this is called bookie um, i also applied a white noise effect a grainy effect to make the picture yeah more grainy and this is actually funny uh, even modern digital SLR cameras um, try to simulate that effect and it's uh, mostly incorporated in the CCD sensor anyway and this effect is better known from the old analog cameras uh, or more from the uh, photo films where you always had a little bit of grainy texture on the uh, photos and uh, yeah the funny thing is modern cameras simulate that as well to uh, yeah it, it seems to be a nice effect <laughs> so I added that one on my photo as well and I this is where actually I start with textures so in order to achieve that noisy effect um, I first go to my uh, fill settings and uh, those fill settings you will find if you have your toolbar open at the very bottom of your toolbar it's that little icon and if you double click on it um, the edit field properties or options uh, open up and here you have uniform fill uh, fountain fill pattern fill and texture fills and texture fills are my favorite actually because you can yeah, interactively change them how you uh, need them according to your needs and uh, yeah whatever you change here it will make your texture look different and um, to add that grainy noise texture i click on the flyout on the right and i think it's this one yes um, yeah this comes close to a white noise effect or fill texture whatever so i'm gonna select that one and I don't have it applied to anything yet in my scene so I need to create an object first which I can fill or I take one of those uh, rectangle or ellipse fills I can also create a polygon and these are most of the time uh, yeah pre-filled with the settings you did in the fill settings so I'm gonna drag a rectangle over my image and here it is here we have our white noise so now I can 
uh, play around with the merge modes. Can add it to my scene or subtract. Can also yeah do it overlay. And uh, when I increase that to a very low value, like ten percent, you uh, see what I mean. This makes your image pretty grainy. So I also use uh, textures in another way in my image and this is what I have here in my post correction group if I enable these you might see the difference already so it's just to break those large patches those large areas into yeah uh, areas with a lot more value variation and um, this is simply done almost the same way I can show you quickly so first I'm gonna create a mask most of the time I use the free mask a freehand mask tool and then I create a mask I'm just doing that roughly here now just for the purpose to show you so this is my mask now and when I have a texture, I can restrict it to that area. But first, I have to create it, of course. And again, I'm going to select this time a more cloudy texture like this one. Let's set the blue color to black. So now I have a nice black and white texture fill. Now I'm going to create a new rectangle. Of this size and when I click it one two three times the handles change to those perspective uh, distortion handles and now I can distort it distort my texture according to the perspective in my scene so uh, yeah this adds a bit more realism to the texture itself because the further away uh, the texture is of course the smaller the details are and now I have two options I either can, uh, either can um, invert my mask and hit control X to get rid of everything that is uh, not necessary or I can create a clip mask which I prefer because clip masks are more uh, non-destructible for the objects so when I create that mask I um, I can edit that clip mask at any time so for example if something adds to that area I can change my clip mask without changing my uh, my actual object and um, the texture still covers the edited area as well and uh, once that done I can select an appropriate merge mode for example add and drag the value down to you know, let's say 10 10 is nice and you see you can see that I have broken up that large patch of color which was pretty flat into you know, more uh, into a patch with more variety and that makes it more realistic and uh, readable as well so that's what I did with the uh, ceiling and um, that wall patch above the bar and if I turn it off and on you might see the difference already so yeah I also use the texture for the floor and that's actually the same process I just grab my um, magic wand mask tool and uh, since I normally use color keyed renders that means that every object has a different color I just simply can use uh, uh, use my uh, magic wand and then yeah, select those areas and apply a texture in the same way so yeah this is how I um, use textures in uh, photo manipulation or photo enhancement also use textures for uh, creating my own brush nibs which I will show you here 
So in order to uh, create a new brush app, I covered that in a couple of uh, different tutorials already. So I'm gonna explain that uh, just roughly. Uh, in order to create a new brush nib, uh, I need a black and white or grayscale image. And uh, since we already have our cloudy texture here, we can just pick our rectangle tool, which will be filled with the cloudy texture, and then hold the control key and drag a rectangle filled with our cloudy texture. And uh, yeah, this is very useful for uh, for a brush nib since it's black and white or since it has grayscale values. But we also need a mask to create a new brush nib. So uh, this is where I use clip masks as well. I just copy my object with an object in the clipboard. I just copy it. I don't um, don't cut it. Uh, I'm going to create a new clip mask from object transparency and into this clip mask you can see that the clip mask is active when it is indicated by that red border. I go to edit, paste and paste my object as a new selection. And in this way I have now um, I have now a clip mask uh, or I have the darker areas in my textures, in my texture uh, transparent and uh, white, the light areas are opaque. And I'm going to combine, combine the clip masks, the clip mask to my object and then hit Control M. I need to delete the mask first. Control M. And now I have a mask consisting of everything around my object and the darker areas in my object itself as well. But first let's apply a vignette effect to it to make that square uh, round which fits more to a brush nib. So I'm going to use effects creative vignette. And yeah, this is already nice. Now I can hit Ctrl M again, use my mask. Then I open my brush settings docker, select a brush, and a custom art brush is fine here. Then I go to the nib options and uh, I can create a new nib from the contents of the mask. And here it is. So it appears in when you open uh, that flyout with a arrow icon you see that there are already a couple of um, yeah predefined uh, brush nibs in Corel Photo Paint and this has changed across previous versions among previous versions as well sometimes more sometimes less and uh, here appear here your new brush nibs your newly created brush nibs will appear so when we create a brush, we of course want to test it out as well. So here it is our smoke brush or cloud brush or whatever. So, uh, yeah, you can create a lot of different textures uh, for your purposes. Um, yeah, this was just an example with a smoke brush. You can also create uh, brush nibs for stone or rock-like textures. Uh, I can, I actually can show you that quickly as well. So I'm gonna drag a new rectangle with the same fill again with a cloudy texture, but instead of making the mask and all that stuff, I first apply. A 3D like effect. For example, already of sculpture. Oh. Yeah, that comes close. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. So this does nothing else than uh, taking the grayscale values of your uh, fill and um, yeah, calculating based on that 
uh, grayscale values. It calculates uh, elevations on your textures. And uh, if you change the light direction, you get an idea what I mean. So this is a very yeah simple way to create um, a rocky stony texture, whatever. So let's adjust the contrast a bit more. Uh, we're gonna copy that object into the clipboard again and go into clip mask, create from object transparency, and then pasting our copied object as new selection into the clip mask. There it is. Everything that is black or that was black in our texture is now um, is now yeah transparent. We actually want to have a different so the opposite way around. So everything that is shadow should be yeah it will be no it will not be visible in our brush nib anyway. So with the uh, clip mask still selected, I go to image, transform, and invert the colors. And as you can see here now, uh, all my shadows are now visible, whereas the light areas are uh, transparent. So I'm going to combine the clip mask with my object again and also apply the vignette. Here we go. On the brush settings docker, and if you don't have the brush selected, uh, nothing will show up here anyway. So don't wonder when there is nothing. It changes as soon as you select the brush. Um, now go to nip options again. Oh, I have a, I have no mask at the moment, so I need to control uh, create it first with Control M. Now where is it? There it is. And create from contents of mask. And there it is. My rock brush. You can also try that one out. Uh, clear the mask. Uh, let's take it gray green. So here is my rock brush. So yeah, as you can see, you can create uh, your own brushes and brush nibs with various effects and especially with textures, very easy. But yeah, that increases your, your uh, painting tools a lot more. So what I also want to show you is a new feature in Corel Photo Paint X7, which in my opinion is awesome, especially when you have to deal with uh, textures. And um, yeah, I need to explain it a bit first. Um, when you are a game designer or uh, yeah, 3D modeler and uh, you are used to work with textures, uh, sometimes it can happen that you use a texture to apply to a, a surface that is larger than the texture itself. So that means that you need to tile the texture. And um, yeah, this can lead to problems, especially yeah, when the, the edges don't fit to the opposite one. So um, let, let me explain that with our smoky texture example again. So for example, if you need to tile this texture, you, the edges will never fit to the opposite one. So the next patch of texture, I actually can show you that. So the next patch of texture would be here and you can see that there is a seam. This would never fit and uh, this is not believable by no means. So it's better to make this small patch of texture um, seamless uh, for yeah being able to tile this patch of texture unlimitedly on every surface on any surface you have and there is a new feature in Corel 
Photo Paint X7 now, which allows you to um, to make your fills uh, seamless. And I'm gonna show you quickly what I mean. So I'm gonna save this one first. So I have saved my uh, piece of my, my object, my filled object now as a JPEG to be able to use that object as a pattern fill. I'm going to double click on my fill icon and this time I go to bitmap pattern fill and here I can click the fill picker that's that little arrow uh, aside the fill preview and here I go to browse I need to change that to JPEG and here is my saved object now I have my uh, my texture as a pattern fill but in order to uh, make this this pattern this patch uh, seamless I can adjust it over here and I can make it um, radial blending and also linear blending. I uh, like to combine both because it gives the most, yeah, the most realistic um, effect. And uh, in the blending, yeah, what is it called? In the linear blend option, I set it to 50%. That means from the edge of your texture up to 50% of your texture uh, will be blended so that gives a nice blend over half of your texture patch and the edge match I leave at 50 but enabled and uh, now as I use that fill you will see that it has no seams anymore so this is how um, a texture is made seamless and let's gonna apply this to my object. So I'm gonna create a mask, get the fill tool, apply it to here. <coughs> now you will see when I duplicate it, there are no seams anymore. So this is the way to create seamless textures. <coughs> Sorry. So we are almost at the end of uh, this webinar. There are a couple of things I want to cover yet regarding tips and uh, tricks. And uh, yeah, I've collected a few requests of uh, my previous after my previous uh, webinar and I want to show you for example how to enhance textures and uh, let's imagine you have a texture of, which is a photo from a tree bark and it is pretty yeah uneven lightened um, that leads to yeah the problems that you can't really use it as a as a bump map for example to explain bump maps uh, they are used um, on 3D models and in rendering to uh, yeah, apply more surface uh, texture to the initial model. So when you have a plain model with a bump texture, you can yeah, manipulate the surface a bit more. And it's just by yeah, taking the uh, light and dark values for elevation and lighter areas are more elevated than darker areas. So if you have a photo which is not evenly lightened uh, or which has shadows in it, you can get rid of that with uh, local equalization which you find under adjustments. I use that actually a lot in conjunction with uh, textures to uh, also create sort of yeah, an ambient occlusion. I will explain in a couple of seconds what that is. Um, I'm going to show you what I mean 
with local equalization. So I'm going to create my famous <laughs> square again. And here I have some light and dark areas. And uh, yeah, to use when I don't want to use that as a bump map and I want to even that more out, then I go to local equalization. And by yeah, adjusting these per parameters, these lighters, I can um, I can enhance my texture a bit more. So in general, the whole texture gets uh, evened evened out way more. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, copy visible. Yeah, that's something very important. Uh, a feature that is existing since a couple of uh, versions, of course. But I use that as well when I especially combine several uh, textures. Uh, let's let me show that on this picture. I have all these separate objects here, which are more or less blend blended or merged on top of each other so uh, when i want to have a copy of that what is actually visible here then yeah i either can combine all these objects into one and then simply copy that object copying to it to the clipboard doing uh, just redoing the steps and then pasting my object in again but you also can uh, create a mask, for example. Um, let's just create a rectangle mask. And now we are able to copy visible. So that takes everything that is stacked on each other, uh, on top, yeah, <laughs> everything in my, in my stack. And if I now do control V, it pastes exactly that image in here. Maybe I should make those things invisible that you can see it a bit more. So this is a very useful feature uh, in the process of creating textures. Um, yeah. What else? Lenses for fine tuning. Yeah, that's almost <laughs> I almost mentioned it. Um, if you have a um, if you stick to a certain workflow in creating textures. Uh, then you might have found out that it's always better to have your separate objects non-destructible. That means that you can make changes at uh, separate objects at any time. And um, here comes uh, the lens feature or here come the lenses into uh, play. Uh, these are nothing more than yeah, you either the effects or adjustments you can make to an image. Not all, but the most uh, important ones, like yeah, contrast, for example. And um, by having a lens, uh, you are able to adjust your object at any time. For example, we want to increase the contrast a bit more, like this. And we can apply that to our object with a lens. And um, to apply that lens only to the object, you can use uh, the clipping group feature. So in that way, I only have applied my lens to the appropriate object. I also can group those objects, but I like to use to make use of the uh, clipping group feature. All right, then we have ah yeah a couple of interesting terms in three D 
modeling, rendering, and game development. Uh, these are terms which are used for several different maps. Let me have so, what are these terms about? Well, normal maps are used almost the same way uh, as bump maps. So, for example, if you have a 3D object and um, you want to apply certain details but don't want to model them out, you can achieve uh, that result with the normal maps. And uh, these work in a way that, yeah, certain RGB values based, uh, certain RGB values in the texture are uh, calculated to uh, angles of the surface uh, and how they receive light. That's a very easy explanation of normal maps. Subsurface scattering is the effect which we might know from uh, human skin or it is very uh, visible on uh, candles for example. In wax it's simply the effect when light shines uh, from behind the surface and through the surface itself. Sometimes it changes its, its color like um, yeah, when you can you can see that at a person's ears, when the light comes from behind, then the light shines through the ears, but looks a little bit more reddish or orange. And um, yeah, this is called subsurface scattering because the light um, hits the surface, penetrates the surface, and is uh, distributed within the surface to um, yeah. And, and yeah, is spread or distributed, just scattered. Uh, ambient occlusion is when, yeah, I better explain that with a brush. <laughs> so let me pick the pencil. Uh, ambient occlusion is when you, I should take a more readable color. So when this is your surface and you have certain dents in it, then of course light from a certain light source hits your surface. But when it is reflected, it uh, gets reflected more from the elevated areas than from the cavities in your dents. So here is always more shadow or to say less light than on the elevated areas because whatever angle the light takes less of the light will hit the cavities of your dense and um, yeah this is called ambient occlusion and we can simulate all these effects within Corel Photo Paint without having ever any kind of uh, 3D model in Corel Photo Paint but uh, we can incorporate that into our textures and um, I'm going to show you how that works. I will start with the normal maps first because from that I can show you the other ones. So I'm going to create a new document 500 to 500 pixels. The background color will be, well at first we, we take white. That's the best way to start off. And um, we need a texture first, a bump texture, which defines how the surface will be shaped. And um, for that I'm gonna pick a fountain fill, radial fountain fill. Um, let's take this one, make that white, and that one black. So this is a good start. We can add some more stuff to it, like some rippling effects. And let's add some This is a bit 
much. Let's add that to overlay. Transparency to 70. Oh, that looks good. So we will add some more stuff to it, like this. So everything that is dark in here is now in, yeah, more in the background and everything that's light is more elevated. So this defines how a flat surface will be, yeah, shaped, sort of. Uh, we need to save the file first, so we go to export. Let's call that bump map. All right. And let's start a new document with a plain background. And then we select the white background and duplicate it four times. Now we need yeah, we need actually four colors, which are uh, angled 90 degrees on a color circle. We're going to start with yellow, a uniform yellow. Maybe I can, uh, well, that's not what I'm actually looking for. So as you can see, I can also drag and drop colors from my color palette and I need a true yellow as a fill color. So I'm going to fill that yellow. This one will be um, cyan. So I'm going to drag that to my fill. So the next one will be dark blue or blue, just plain blue. And the fourth one will be magenta. So all these four colors, if you imagine them on an RGB color circle, they all will have the same distance to each other on the color circle. That's why I've chosen them. And um, uh, let me show that here. So I used this image in another tutorial where I explained the displays feature in Corel Photo Paint. Uh, if we want to, yeah, we need to apply the colors, the four colors, uh, to uh, to different directions. And um, yellow will be for the top left corner. Cyan will be for the top right corner. Uh, blue for the bottom right corner and magenta for the bottom left corner. And um, this is simply how uh, normal maps are built. In the next step, I'm going to select my yellow object and create a clip mask again. You might already found out that I'm pretty addicted to clip masks. <laughs> then we go to effects, custom, bump map. And here we select our, um, our own custom bump map. And we go to surface lighting. And we need um, the yellow color on all surfaces that point into the top left direction. So the directional light will be, yeah, this way, I think it's fine. Yes, exactly. The declination we can set down to zero so that there, um, all, surfaces, uh, all surfaces which are parallel to the viewer are colored, which is physically actually not possible, but Still, they are more colored than uh, surfaces which are perpendicular to the viewer's eye. 
the surface the floor needs to be at zero the ceiling at 255 that's okay no highlight smooth bump maps and invert bump map and the scale factor the more we dial it down the less visible the effect will be we will leave it at eight i think that was fine um yeah now every every surface on our bump map or on our yeah virtual object which points into the upper left direction is colored yellow we do the same with our cyan object we create a clip mask from object transparency and with a clip mask selected we go to effects custom bump map again we leave the settings uh, but we change the directional light to uh, 45 degrees so light that comes from the upper right corner is colored magenta and every surface of our object that is pointing towards the upper right corner is colored uh, cyan not magenta cyan uh, all right we do that with a blue one as well clip mask create from object transparency the clip mask selected we go to effects custom bump map and here the light uh, lighting we change to 315 degrees all right and the last one the cyan object uh, the, the magenta object also create a clip mask here custom bump map lighting and 225 that's fine we are almost finished what we need to change is the background color because every surface that is uh, pointing directly to us so the z-axis so to say need a specific color we need to set that in the fill settings uh, here we select a uniform fill and then we need to put in the RGB values of 128, 128, and 255. That gives us that, yeah, gray blue, sky blue, whatever. And we're gonna fill our background, and there we have our normal map. And now to finally show you what that normal map actually is used for. Uh, a little program here just called crazy bump and now to show you that these normal maps even work in your uh, 3d applications first I'm going to export that one uh, called uh, normal yep thank you There we have our little crazy bump program. I'm just gonna show you how a normal map actually works. Here's our normal. Let me see, calculate it. And here you can see what the normal map adds to the surface. So if we have a plain surface, we can probably see it better at a box. So with that normal map we add a, a sense of uh, 3d to the surface but it's only simulated and uh, yeah is used to calculate uh, in which intensity the light hits the surface so we can move that around a little bit of course the lower the angle to the surface the less visible this effect becomes so this is how normal maps are used um, yeah this is how I create normal maps in Corel Photo Paint um, if you have your bump map once you have your bump map this one uh, it's totally yeah easy to create anything else from it for example um, yeah let's create an ambient occlusion map so like I said ambient occlusion is when less light hits uh, the cavities 
and um, again we're gonna open a new document same resolution 500 to 500 pixels and we go to um, actually we can do it the other way around that's even better so let's import our bump map import okay doesn't want to work anyway we can also drag and drop it in here there it is and by using the local equalization on this one we can achieve something that is similar to uh, ambient occlusion so in the cavities you have more darker areas and uh, everything that is more elevated is lighter of course the effect doesn't uh, is not that extreme like here so you always can uh, multiply that on your texture and set the uh, uh, merge opacity to 10% maybe or yeah, maybe even 20 but not more it's just to add a little bit of shadow to the cavities um, subsurface gathering I can show you that in, in this document so if I have an object like this ellipse well, let's use a bit more 3D like um, a bit of a more 3D like object So like this for example, I'm going to use my ellipse tool and here I have something like a ball and my light is coming from the back. Let's say this is my light source and it's coming from here. Well, it actually should be light, so we take white. So this is <laughs> this is now my light source, and the light from behind uh, hits the hidden surface from the ball at the back, and gets scattered in the surface or under the surface and reaches the front and is visible. And we can achieve that by yeah du duplicating our object. In this one we need to. Uh, lighten up. You can do that with a brightness and contrast. And here we set the brightness to and let's say 50%. Yeah, that should be bright enough. And we also need to fuzz it because the light gets scattered in the surface. So we go to effects, blur. Oh, we can use a clip mask here as well. <laughs> so we create a clip mask from object transparency, go to effects. We don't need to blur the clip mask, we need to blur the object itself. Um, no, we need to blur the clip mask. Effects, blur, Gaussian blur. That should be fine. Yes, almost. Well, let's apply that to the upper object. So we create a clip mask here, effects, blur, Gaussian blur. Where 
set that to zero and about this value. That's nice. And now as we change the color of the underlying object uh, with effects, camera, now let's take photo filter. We set that to a more orange color. Preserve the luminosity. So like this, and this one we will change to um, camera photo filter to more reddish color. Something like this. Now you can see that the light comes from behind as well a bit. This is called subsurface scattering. But yeah, all these things are neat, nice little effects just to use, uh, just to enhance your textures a bit. And um, yeah, I am actually done so far with the webinar. So I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope this was useful. If you um, like to ask a couple of questions at the 8th of March I will uh, make a question and answer sit in on Facebook just uh, take a look at the Coral uh, Facebook page and uh, join there to uh, ask whatever question you have regarding this webinar thank you for watching again and see you or yeah <laughs> see you next time bye bye